Yeah, in my last video, I had promised that I was going to talk about export agriculture and why we have found it so difficult to engage export agriculture in Africa, why we find it difficult to export our programs or our products like the rest of the world. Let me use this time, this short video to explain why. So agricultural products is, can be considered as the new crude oil. I explain how countries like India export okra, a product we have in abundance in Africa, but we lack the capacity to join the global market. The reason we lack the capacity to join the global market to a large extent has to do, as I explained earlier, with a fracture in the supply chain management. Nigeria is the largest producer of cassava according to the World Food Program as of 2021. We produced 63 million metric tons of cassava and we generated barely $1 million in exports. Take a country like Thailand. They do not eat cassava. They produced and generated over $1.6 billion, all in cassava. Just exports to United States alone. A country like Argentina, they export soybean, they export wheat, tomato and maize. In 2021 alone, Argentina products to China was worth over 5.6 billion. And to the United States, Argentina exported products worth over 32 billion. So you start to wonder why we are so stuck on crude oil in Africa. Take a country like Israel. They export oranges, grapefruits, tangerine, avocados, and olive. Just avocados alone, a tree we can comfortably plant in Africa, Israel exported over 200 million in 2021. They generated over 2.4 billion in agricultural export in 2021. Take a country like Mexico, they export sugar, coffee, fruits, and vegetables. In 2022 alone, Mexico generated 46.6 billion in agricultural food export according to USDA database. So all the products Mexico exports, we can grow those products in Nigeria. The question is this, why are we locked out of this global market export? Why can't we join the rest of the world to reap the fruits of global agricultural exports? Take note, I'm not talking about African food that have been exported to African stores overseas like yam and gari. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about staple, other exportable staple foods that are eaten globally like corn, soybeans, avocados, tomato, rice, onions, among others. Take a product like onions, which we produce massively in northern Nigeria. According to the World Food Organization database 2022, they made it very, very clear. A country like Netherlands, from onions alone that they exported, they made over 849 million. China generated over 564 million exporting onions. India generated 524 million just for onions. But it is rotten in our farms in Nigeria. Listen carefully. We are not locked out of the global food export market because the market is an open market. We are the ones that locked ourselves out due to corruption and failed institutions that have made export trade not to work. Take note of what I'm about to say. Poverty in Africa is not so much a direct product of trade imbalances as we have been made to believe, or a direct consequence of colonialism and imperialism as we have been taught in history. To be very frank with you, poverty in Africa is a direct consequence of bad political leadership, including ineffective and poorly managed economic policies. As Africans, we created our own poverty and continue to fuel poverty to our future generations. In today's economy, we cannot blame anyone for Africa's woes but ourselves. The central reason 
why we cannot enter the global agricultural trade and make billions like the rest of the world is failure in logistics supply management. Listen carefully. Let me take my time to explain that. By logistics supply management, we mean how different components of the supply chain are seamlessly coordinated to enhance the smooth movement of export agriculture. According to the World Food Organization database in 2022, Mexico generated 2.6 billion in exporting just tomatoes. They are the largest exporter of tomatoes in the world. India generated 11.8 billion exporting basmati rice. Israel made 177 million exporting avocados. Mexico gross over 2.83 billion exporting the same avocados to the United States. I'm talking about avocados trees. We can comfortably plant these trees in Nigeria. It takes six to eight years. It starts massive production. These are products raking billions and billions of dollars. Yet we cannot feed ourselves in Africa. We just depend on crude oil. Mexico actually have over 260,000 acres of avocados plantation. Imagine the massive wasted lands we have in northern Nigeria, unused while our people bask in poverty. Our central logistics supply management is non-functional and cannot support export trade. And what do I mean by this? We have non-functionality in transportation, packaging, storage, and warehousing poor functionality in inventory management, supply chain visibility, and tracking. Others would include failures in compliance regulations and quality control. Our export laboratories and standardization processes cannot be trusted. So also included are poorly organized packaging and labeling, contract logistics, absence of export trade finance, market intelligence, demand forecasting. These are the things that control international trade. And they're in the hands of our civil servants. They're in the hands of our bureaucracy that lack institutional memory. Else I forget. Another factor that, act, that has actually affected our trade is cross-border documentation and, 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 and compliance and um, export insurance programs. Our insurance programs, they need to be efficient to be able to engage the rest of the world if they must do business with us. How you need to understand this is this. Let's say you are a very good footballer in a local village. If a very good coach does not identify you and bring you to the international scene, you remain a local footballer the rest of your life. Nobody will know you. You will never be a Pele. You will never be a Maradona because you are not identified and you are not known. That is how international trade works. If we do not put our house together, the main distributors that move these products from countries to countries, the main distributors that move these products and place them in international warehouses and place them in international stores, they will not deal with Nigeria. We do not have a good insurance pro uh, pro uh, in, in, in industry to guarantee the safety of agricultural exports. So listen carefully. Failure and underdevelopment and corruption within the public service, poor training of public servants, lack of institutional memory, poor education, coupled with bad political leadership, makes it practically impossible for Africa to seamlessly engage in export agriculture. Let me summarize. Only Africans can change Africa. No one will do it. And for Africans to change Africa, we have to take life seriously. We have to build our institutions. We have to sacrifice 
for our future generations. That is the greatest task we have in this generation. Is there hope for Africa? The answer is yes. At the appropriate time, Africa shall rise again. I am Prince Will Odidi. Follow me on YouTube. Follow me on my social media platforms as we continue to have these conversations. And then go to my YouTube channel. I plan to drop some videos where I'll have extensive